Hey guys, welcome to a new special segment of Chief Concerns. This is a uh, a pre-draft special from our Chief Concerns crew. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary Chiefs tight end Jason Dunn and my brother Tasia Dash. So in this episode, we're going to get into draft crushes. It's, it's a funny. It's funny. I don't think I've used the term draft crush more uh, in my life than later on in my life. Obviously, when we were kids, we had crushes on you know on uh, on uh, on girls and stuff at school. But now, you know, our crushes now have <laughs> fantasy draft implications of guys you have a crush on going into the fantasy drafts, and then of course, the real NFL draft, our crush on guys that uh, we want our teams to draft. So I, I think it's a funny concept with these uh, with the crush term uh, as we get older in our lives. <laughs> yeah. You know, they've been doing it like for a celebrity crush too, right? It's like, who's your celebrity crush? Yeah. Right. And so that's, that's one of those things. So who's your, who's your celebrity crush? That's a good question. Let me start off with that. Right. So, so we can put in. All right. I probably go uh, uh, Charlize Theron. Wow. Oh. Yeah. She, she, she's okay. aged so well. She, I mean, she was great. She was great back back in, you know, when she was younger and she's just great. She's gracefully aged. So, yeah, I would definitely go Charlize Theron on my celebrity crush there. Okay. All right. Tage? I'll go uh, Anna de Armas. Oh. Anna de Armas? I don't think yeah. I know her. What is she? she? She's the big, do um, you ever see the new Blade Runner? I did. I didn't really like it. I fell asleep on it, actually, to be honest. She was a really big, like, digital picture that, like, talk, like, you know, like the really big pink one. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, man, nah, I'm going to look her up. She was she, in Knives Out. She was. She, she in, did Affleck right before Affleck went back to J, uh, J-Lo. Yeah, yeah, because they were doing a movie together, and Affleck's the king of doing uh, dating Yeah, I'm like this, you know. So, talk about yeah. someone who's aged gracefully. That's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she still has her. I mean, the way she looks, she still has her starting spot locked up, man. She's got, you know, yeah, she's, she's aging like Kelsey over there, man. <laughs> no, no, no sign of decline, huh? No, <laughs> zero. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, she's been she's been my number one pick for a long time. I'll tell my wife, I'm like, you know what, Holly Berry might be the one. I said, I, I would now, I would never do it. But that'd be the one I'd be thinking in my mind, like, you know what? Uh yeah, it is nah, my, my my lady, I I would never ever think about doing anything like it. Yeah, well, even, even, even considering it get you in trouble. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So even the in brain contract, you're like, you know what? <laughs> we do some negotiations. We'll see, we'll see what you know, see what we can do here. Yeah. It's like <laughs> play, with, it's, play with the numbers. Uh, oh, well, you know, we, when my wife sees her on TV, anytime she turns and like looks at me, and I'm just like, "Hey, <laughs> like I'm good. I'm good with you. I've been good with you for a long time. So we all right." So <laughs> yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Hallie's one of those people universally. If, if you don't, if she's not on your list in some capacity, yeah, you, you got issues. Yeah. Um, but all right. So, um, so for obviously with this episode, we're gonna get to our. Uh, Tasia and Jason are going to both say their three draft crushes. Um, so JD will lead the way with his first draft crush, and then we'll talk about it. And then Tasia will go with his draft crush, and then back to JD for his second draft crush. So each of these, uh, Tasia and JD will both have three draft crushes in this episode. So uh, let's uh, let's dig in here, JD. What we got. Oh man. So uh, I know we we did our show. And we was talking about you know a mock draft having it our ways and and i've been thinking about this i actually went on a show this weekend uh on the the spoken podcast and was kind of talking and, and, and having a thought process here one of my draft crushes uh i think without a doubt is brock bowers okay brock bowers is a guy that when i look at him when i've seen him over the the uh, the time that he's been there at Georgia, what he's been able to do because he fits the body type. He could be a wide receiver or a tight end. That, I mean, that's how skillful he really is. Uh, and if we think of just long-term here, if we had somebody that was going to either take over 
air apparent for Travis Kelsey because we don't know how long Kelsey is going to be able to do it. Right. Man's 35 years old or close to it. Uh, you know, I know, I know he's with Taylor Swift, keeping a little young, running around and stuff, but I think he may want to start moving out of the, um, out of the realm of the NFL. So we keep him for two years. You got a guy like Brock Bauer here. I think that works for us. You hit two birds with one stone because he could go outside them double teaming uh, out, you know, inside and out, man, it just, it just works because he's like a wide receiver tight end. But I do think when you have that type of combination and you add Hollywood Brown, that makes for a difference what you want to do offensively. So Brock Bowers to me, man, is almost a no brainer. That's one of my crushes, no doubt. So what you say, what you say, what you think, what you think? I, I, I'm going to echo somebody in the chat here. Brock Bowers would be nuts. It would be nuts. I mean, if we were to get him, um, like you said, it, it, would, it would check off the wide receiver and tight end uh, the spot. And then also, too, it would be preparing our guy next in line um, to uh, for Travis Kelsey. But, I mean, obviously, yeah, I think someone wrote, uh, won't be anywhere close to us. But, obviously, it would take some draft capital to get that, J.D. And is Brock Bowers, in your, in your mind, J.D., is Brock Bowers worth it where we would have to, you know, trade some future assets to go get him? I, I do. I, I do believe that. I think so. I think if you're if you're thinking about somebody, like I said before, who can take over the role of Travis Kelsey, uh, maybe someone emulate what he's been able to do over the years. The closest one in this draft, or at least from what I've seen, maybe this year or next year, if we have to address that issue, is a Brock Bowers. I mean, it really is. So – uh, why not go get a guy now that you know has a talent that has been destroying defenses, just makes it look easy and can do everything that you possibly want him to do as a wide receiver and a tight end body. Um, this is If you're going to do up and move up in a draft, this will be the draft for me to do something like that for the Chiefs. So I think should have just traded up like three spots and gotten Dalton Kincaid last year. Yeah, J.D., what do you see the difference between – because I know Kincaid was the, the talk of last year's draft. And he what's went the, pretty late in the first. What's the biggest difference between Dalton Kincaid and Brock Bowers in your mind? Uh, I, athletic ability. I think I think Brock Bowers, man, has a full route tree. He can do it from inside and outside. He's not your typical guy. Uh, to me, he was more so of a wide receiver than he was a tight end. I guess they just really gave him the, the moniker as a tight end these past couple of years. And so what he's been able to do, I'm just like, this guy right here is – Believe unbelievable. You know, I know we, we talk about Lad, they brought Lad up, but I'm just like Brock Bowers is the guy, been the guy. So it, it's 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 really a no-brainer to me, man. It, it, to, when I'm telling you, he fills all the boxes, check them all out. A talent like this that you know you're gonna get from a something like Dalton Kincaid better than him. He he does it. Brock Bowers is the guy. He's better than Don Kincaid. I don't care what tight end you think about the past couple of years. Brock Bowers is better than them, in my opinion. And I play tight end, so yeah. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it, JD. And of course, I'm one of those guys. Whatever if Veach likes it, then I'm 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 all for it. So if he wants, to, if he if he feels like he could trade the third round pick we got from Snead and Pax to get us some other stuff to get up in that first round to get him, then I'm all for it. Oh yeah. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Um, I'd be – I've wanted a tight end for years to, to start kind of taking over, Um, you know, start to slowly grab that torch from uh, from Kelsey. I don't think Kelsey wants to give it up anytime soon. Um, But I just – um, it would be a lot of draft capital for a guy that – we just don't know how much he's going to play next to Kelsey for what, three years at least. I don't think Kelsey's going to go anywhere for like at least three years, um, three to five. I don't know. I, I, how, how it, it really, I think this draft, that pick really depends on how long you see Kelsey play. Um, yeah, we could do more two tight ends since we did a lot more last year. And um, I just, yeah, Personally, if he fell to us, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would be totally okay with it. It just depends how much we give up. If we're talking about giving up, because the way we're just currently built, not that I don't think Bowers is worth it. Bowers is a really, really good tight end. But the way we're built, and we have a Mahomes on offense and basically a Mahomes on defense sucking up like 40 to 50% of our salary cap, we just, I mean, we we got to be, we got to have a lot of cheaper guys out there. And if we're having to trade two to three draft picks to get, a guy who's not even going to play 
full, full, full time and really get to where we want him to be until another guy retires. I just, you know, for the time being, I just don't know how much that's going to. Um... So, so you don't think Bravos comes in and starts right away, immediately. He's a starter to me. You, you put him. So the way I look at it, he's not playing behind Kelsey. He plays with Kelsey. So when he's, he's that guy that's a wide receiver that you're looking for who can match up well with linebackers, safeties, corners. Brock Bowers can do it all. He runs great routes. He's he, he's very athletic. Uh, and so you have Hollywood Brown. You have Travis Kelsey. You got Brock Bowers. And let's say you get another guy in here, right? She writes to come back later after all the things he has to deal with. But he's a guy that you could put in and plug and play right now. Think about it like this. I don't know how many snaps Noah Gray is getting, but you would increase the snaps on the second tight end from something like that. Yeah, I would. I would imagine that. Yeah. 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 And so when a lot more two tight end sets. Right. And, and to me, if you're thinking about like the old, let's just say, old New England, right, with Hernandez and 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 Gronk, well, you have Travis Kelsey is more, you know, shiftier. Brock is more shiftier, more athletic than those two guys. You have two better athletes on the field that matches up really well, size wise and speed wise. I think just with just overall ability, that's what I think. So Bob Bowers is not going to be wasted. If I get him first round, he is not sitting on a. Oh big yeah, round. yeah, yeah. He's I'm not, not worried about like his output. I think we would if we took him, it would be because Reed. And Nagy already know what they're going to cook up with him. They already have that plan. Like uh, anyone that we draft, I think they already know what his plan is going to be uh, for the most part. Uh, we're very calculated in that in that regard. I, I would just be worried. It's not about like the player per se. It's just about giving up how much draft capital to give up for a guy that you know. Not not to say he won't be worth that, but we just lose so much in overall team um, improvement because we just we lose the draft picks for that. We. We need all the drivers we can get. Like, I mean, I could justify trading three first rounders for Marvin Harrison too, but like we'd also lose three first rounders in that. So it's not necessarily the guy we're gaining; it's all the other stuff we'd be losing. That's all. I'm not, I'm not questioning yeah. the Bowers selection itself. No, no. So I, I think he wouldn't like moving up that far. You could probably find a team, and I'm thinking he's probably going to be somewhere around ten to like 17, 18 ish, right? So. Immediately put it out and say, "Hey, what what would you take? We're not going to give up the farm for the guy. We're not okay. If we want to give you a couple of picks, third round, and maybe something next year, cool. Can you do that? I I think teams would be willing to do it, especially if they have a, a better need than we do. So I'm thinking if you address this need now, okay, um, as opposed to maybe a tackle, because I said the only other tackle in this draft that I would move up for is John All. He'd be the guy I move up for, right? Yeah." If we're trying to address an issue that we have going, we're going to have a guy here for the next five years. Brock Bowers is going to have for the next five years. We're not going to have to put a whole lot of money in anything else. We're not going to have to pay any other tight end. Brock Bowers is that guy. Yeah. Then you could go get wide receivers and all that other stuff somewhere else, right? Yeah. So, uh, I, I uh, and I'm with you. I wouldn't give up the farm if it costs too much money. Absolutely not do it. You know, absolutely not. So, but. It's a crush. So sometimes, you know, it takes right. a lot yeah, to get yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot to get them. Sometimes yeah. it never comes to fruition, but we can yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. all have our Halle Berry out there. That's why it's a crush and not a need, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and we got you play tight end, Tony G. Is that really you? Well, JD, you want to respond back to IC oh, Darko man. Five there? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> is that? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, if, if you look behind JD, I see dark. There's a yeah, photo yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, if, if you don't know who I am, uh, just look me up. Yeah. J J Jason Dunn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, Tasia, uh, take us away with your uh, your draft crush here, buddy. So, we've done some shows together, so this guy will sound somewhat familiar to you. Um, so, my, my first draft crush is uh, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Um, it's a massive man who moves like a tight end. Uh, six, seven, three, gosh, man, like three, 30, 340. Um, so I was listening to the PFF guys go over this. So they, they, they did say a lot of negatives about him. So uh, it shows that, you know, it's a firmly entrenched crush. If you can hear a lot of negatives about a guy and still like him a lot, um, because their negative 
for him is something that I think will not really play into a negative for us. What I mean by that is they call him the develop, developmental tackle of the draft. That's what they call him. Um, when he looks good, he looks amazing. And when he looks bad, it looks really bad. And the difference between that and the top tackles in the draft are when they look bad, it's it's a small error. When he looks bad, it's like, whoa, look, it's like really bad, right? Mm-hmm. But they said all this with a the caveat. They said, although the inconsistencies do scare them, if you are confident in your O-line coaching on your NFL team, uh, then this is the guy to take a chance on. If you think your your coaching can develop him and make him look like the peak version of himself more often than not, then take a shot at him. And I personally trust our O line room and our O line and our line coaching. Um, I would not be surprised to still see us draft or I'm sorry, sign a vet. Remember this time last year, we didn't really have a tackle before the draft. Everyone was projecting us to get a tackle. We got, we got rid of OBJ. We signed the Taylor thing. It was still really up in the air, right tackle, left tackle. No one really knew what we were doing there. Um, we drafted Wanya in the third, and then we ended up still signing Don Smith after the draft. So although it looks like, you know, you're looking at our, our, our depth charts, like Wanya, and that's it at left tackle, um, it looks like it's a shoe in to get a, a, a tackle. I would still wouldn't be surprised if we drafted a guy like this and then still signed a, a veteran left tackle, maybe Don Smith again for cheap cheaper maybe um and keep in mind that the uh the over under in draft is nine and a half for tackle uh, for uh offensive linemen in the first first round so wow uh you know do the math on that that's a lot that's almost a third of of the uh the first round is going to be tackle or o lineman sorry Mm -hmm. jd your thoughts on uh tyler guyton so as i said before uh, I like Tyler Guyton. Uh, I do believe that there, without a doubt, are more talented guys. You know, not to crush on your crush. Okay? No. Uh, but I've said, you know, he plays right tackle more so than he plays left. So trying to make a transition from right to left is a huge thing. It's huge. Uh, I don't think people realize exactly how hard of an issue that is. Wanye Morse that we got last year in the third round has had – a year under his belt. He's got more experience now than a guy like this that needs the development. Well, Wanya Morris has been in the room getting the development, and he's a step ahead, shoot a whole season ahead of yeah. uh of my guy right here. And so and he plays left. So that to me, and you can still go get a Donovan Smith, right? You can still go do those things. Um uh, but I, I mean, I like him. You know, that's your crush, man. I, you know, shoot, you stick with your crush that you like. If, if it's your girl, you want to take her to the dances. You know, hey, <laughs> hey, you like I love her. So if, if you like this guy, I, he's, he, I mean, he's he's a solid dude. My thing is, if you're gonna take a guy in the first round, if this is what we think, this is your first round pick, right, Tage? Right? Yeah, Correct? yeah. It is that year of development. You already got a guy over there, in Jawan Taylor. This guy's he's definitely not touching the field. He's not. So we talking about Brock Bowers. To me, Brock Bowers, I'm just going back to him. He's playing. You you when you come here, start running routes. You are going to play. You are playing at least of of the snaps. This guy right here is gonna be eating cheesesteaks and and fries, just kind of watching from the background until somebody gets hurt. Then it's his time. Like Wanya, like Wanya Morris did when Donovan Smith got hurt. Yeah. So if you put all your time into a guy that's going to be right tackle under a guy that you're paying $20 million a year to in Jawan Taylor, uh, he's not going to sniff the field. Yeah, you could develop him. What is going to develop into? I just know Wanye uh, Morris has that year. He's going to be a left, t- left tackle right now until Donovan Smith comes back or whoever else you get. But as a, as a coach who coached O-line before, hey, man, I'm going with the guy that, that's that's been here. You know, the guy I trust. If I had to put my time in, not, not saying I won't put my time into this guy, I will. But then I had to think about moving him all the way from the right, t- changing him over to the left, and then teaching him his whole body skills over the left side. So now I got to take your, your your deficiencies you had on the right, put them over to the left, and still work on some of those things that you weren't getting, uh, uh, getting, getting good or were doing well. 
So he's got the athleticism, though. So I, the, the long arms and the athleticism and the size, I, I think he can make. From what I've read and, and heard, he can make the transition to left, and it wouldn't be a problem with his makeup, uh, athleticism, and they say he could play tight end. That's how quick his feet are. Um, I, so uh, they're saying his athletic. You know, um, I heard one of the one of the comps for him, I believe, was um, Tyron Smith was one of his comps. When he looks like his peak, yeah, he, he can look bad. He can look bad too. But when he looks good, it's like this guy could be our guy for the for the for for ten years type thing. Do they have a comp of what he looks like when he's like bad? Because he said like he, when he's like really good, he's really good. When he's bad, he's really bad. Like what's what, what's the comp there? <laughs> well, you got to understand like these guys. We're at thirty two guys, so like there's a reason why you know his crush you have to trade up ten spots for right. Right, like, but 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 there's certain positions though that like let's say if we went to a draft receiver, that receiver is going to play. We're going to see that guy. This yeah, guy, may, we never, may never see the field uh, this year. And we'll, we'll get to receiver in a moment, I, I believe, uh, at least with one of mine. But receiver is also the deepest in like the draft. So, like, tackle, you know, but tackle is deep too, though. It is. But, like, I've read that the 15th best receiver is small difference from the fifth best receiver in this draft once you get out of the top three. So, that's different for tackles, man. Like, tackles, those two guys put in front of, like, I mean, Alt is Alt. Alt's in like a, you know, a standalone himself. He's a 6'9 left tackle um, um he's, he's ready to go and protect your guy when you get to this stage you have the legit left tackles you have the right tackles you hope that can transition to be left tackle and then you have the projects which are usually in that range also the projects are with the guys like guyton and kingsley they're they're not ready to be if they were if you gave guyton one more year at left at, at, at um in college playing the position you'd be he's like a top 12 pick so forget about even sniffing him at that point right the only reason oh drafted as high as he might get drafted is because he's shown that potential in his size and athleticism. So like, yeah, I mean, he's got questions or else we wouldn't even be able to look at him. If he, if he, if he didn't have these questions, forget about it. It comes down to these guys have flaws. Do is your team suited to fix those flaws? That's why I like us. If we were like, dude, if we were like a bad team ready to put him in at starter, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be recommending this pick at all. It's not, it's, it's the crush is about him and situation kind of mixed into one. Like I like our situation for him because we have great O-line coaching that can fix those problems. And then there you go. Your 32nd pick overall left tackle became like a top 15 uh, type left tackle. So, okay. So I'll I'll say yes. I've, I've evaluated the tackles, the top ones in this draft. John Alt is head and shoulders above everybody else. Oh yeah. It, when, when I'm saying this, I'm talking about the the amount of talent after that drops significantly. And so when I'm when I'm sitting here, teams may need left tackles or right tackles. They need tackles because it's a need. Yes. But I'm saying the skill wise, from what I see, it's not going to be different from any that like the draft last year. So when I say that, when I'm looking at the tackles that played last year, they got drafted in the first round, the top five. Two of those guys play guard. The other three struggled. Yeah. They struggled. And so when I'm looking at the evaluation, I'm looking at his feet. I'm looking at your hands. I'm, I, I just – these tackles, man, it's, it's going to be uh, – It's tough. It is. It's, man, and and, I, and and then having to consider changing the guy from right to left, I to me, man, I, I just – I, I get people say the athletic, and I'm like, okay, he's athletic. Well, who's he going against? How athletic is that guy? Yeah. Now you now you put him over here for something he hadn't seen before. It's going to be a whole different animal to him. Yeah. So listen, I mean, shoot, Wanya Morris is playing left tackle, and he gets beat by a uh, uh, my man from, you know. Everybody from Oakland, let me put it that, not Oakland, but Las Vegas. <laughs> that mean from everybody from Las Oakland, Vegas. Oakland DL. Just yeah, 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 right. Oakland insert player. Yeah, so th- that's the only thing I say because when I look at these tackles down for this draft, man, I see issues. I see a whole lot of issues there. I really do. Uh, he's at the bottom of my list, and the only reason he's at the bottom of my list is because he's the right side. He's the right side guy. Shoot, we try we to get the guys on the left side even to play good. You know what I mean? Like I, I got questions about the guys that actually play that position. So that's what I hate sometimes when I'm looking at these these draft that they never put them in like left tackle, right tackle. I'm like, so why are you not doing this? How are you not even consider 
how, how big of a difference it is playing right and left tackle, right? I, I, I just think they look at hands and, and athletic ability. They never think about, like, when you switch guys to right and left, how much of a difference it really is. Well, you know? they talked about this on the PFO show, and, and they uh, – they said it's just so hard to evaluate a lot of these guys because offenses do so many – just so different from college to the pros. And a lot of things they're going to be asked to do in the pros, they did not – they were not asked to do in college. So right. when you're evaluating them, you're evaluating them almost with a pro lens, but you're evaluating college play. So it's hard to do that with a lot of these guys. And with O-line, there's guys all over the line that are going to be already slated to play guard are already slated to play center. Like, oh, he's a guard in this league. Just sign it away. He's a guard. Even though he played his entire career at, at right tackle, he's a, he's a right guard now. And that's just that. They signed him up for that. That's, what he, that's how he's going to be drafted. That's how he's going to be used. Um, and they just feel like that guy's skill set can transfer over to this. And again, I say this not putting him out there on an island on left tackle for year one. He is going to sit behind people. I, I just I, I already feel like we're going to get a vet anyway. So, yeah. um, you know, if – if we get a vet and, and and draft him, I just I wouldn't mind it because I think he can be coached up to where we like him to be. Okay. But, you know. and, and, and I'm and what I'm doing, I'm I'm saying this about the overall just tackle the whole business in itself, right? Because yeah. as hard as it was in college, it's going to be even harder in the NFL. Yeah, like tons, and and so you could be all SEC. Like we had Darian Kennard. we had Darian Kennard. He was all SEC. He was going against the best players in the SEC, right? Alabama, LSU, all of them. Well, he's in Philly right now. We got him drafted. So that transition from these guys coming here, this, hey, man, look, it's, it's, the learning curve is a whole a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. And I get sometimes when sometimes these evaluators are sitting there like, oh, you got great hands. And I'm like, dude, have you been out on the field? Have you blocked a defensive end in the NFL before? I have several of them, the best in the business. And I see these guys coming out right now and how good they look. So I know it's going to be a struggle. And I, and I get these guys going because it could be anybody. It could, it could really be anybody. I just know the levels of talent. Like if you have a tackle, I see maybe in this draft, I'm going to be honest with you. Tackle-wise, I see maybe three guys, maybe three, if not the top two that I would get. Other than that, everybody else, backups, maybe year two or three, third year, Maybe, you know what I mean. Other than that, I want to start nobody else. This is me. This is me talking. Okay, mm -hmm. it's me talking. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Andy Reid had a press conference earlier, and he says the team is looking at wide receiver and offensive tackle positions as an option in round one, but adds it's a long wait until pick number thirty-two. So, yeah, yes, you falls. Yes, you yeah. falls. Yeah. The other guy to Georgia Mims is very similar to this too. Looks yeah. like a right tackle, quick feet, but only played like what, like a, a handful of games. Yeah, games. Don't have yeah. Tape on him, he right. looked great with the tape you saw, but mm -hmm. you only have like a handful of games with him. That's right. So, yeah. Stop. Right. And I like Mills before I like this guy because he is athletic. He's big. He's got all his different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you never know how it's going to translate in the NFL. You just don't. A lot of it at this pick for especially tackles because so many are gone. I mean, it's over under nine and a half, right? So we're ten deep at this point. So that's a lot. Ten deep by thirty-two of a draft, even if it even if it's deep, Marcus. Ten deep is a lot already crossed off the board before it even gets to our pick. You're now you're looking at he looks the part. He's got mm -hmm. flaws. Can our coaching get rid of those flaws? That's why I think what you're looking at at thirty-two at, at a position like left tackle. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, JD. Let's uh, let's hear your uh, your second crush here, buddy. All right, my second crush here. Uh, this guy, man, I'm high on. I've been talking about him. Uh, we talked about him in the mock draft, our show, um, that he has a high motor. He he uses his hands well. Very strong, very powerful. Will is an absolutely nonstop, you know, wrecking ball, okay? And he just looks like he's better and better uh, the more I look at him in, in film-wise. Uh, just his technique. Takes on double teams really well. I said we need a compliment beside uh, Chris Jones because we've just been patchworking different guys, getting them one-year deals. We haven't really had somebody who's could, who could be with Chris Jones over the, the term of his contract. Chris Jones is going to end up being a chief for life, okay? We would need a guy right beside him going to do as much work 
and take some of that load off of Chris Jones. Uh, Brendan Frisk, me from uh, uh, Florida State University, man, is the guy. Uh, he's just not a guy. He is the guy uh, for me. Uh, he brings everything to the table that, that you like to see on film, uh, like the nastiness, uh, gets up, pops up after every single play. Uh, he's just ready to go. So a guy like that, man, you just give him a, a glass of water, let him turn him loose. Okay. Maybe put some, uh, some red meat out there for him and, 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 and let him go. <laughs> so that's why I like Brendan Frisk a lot. Um, and so my thing is, I, that's why I would like to move up and get Brock Bowers. Can you move back and get a, some, a guy like Fitz? Can you do something like that? Can you make some things like that work? Right. Hey, Beach, use your magic. See what you can do. If you want to get guys that you want to be here for a long time, Guys, is going to come in here right now and make an immediate impact. That's why I want immediate impact. Brandon Fritz comes here; he's an immediate impact. He's starting. Everybody else is taking a backseat to him. That's what's going to happen, p- pure and simple. So that's that's why I like uh, Brandon Fisk. Tasia, your uh, thoughts on uh, on Fisk? I mean, I've been a huge fan of Fisk for since I started um, just watching college players this year for the draft and for the chiefs um, before we re-signed all of our guys, before we got, you know, Jones back. I mean, this was because of the guy I was like, okay, if we don't get Jones then you know, we load up on town in the draft maybe sign another veteran. Um, he's just relentless. He's a beast. Um, every review I've read on him, people just rave about him. He's been skyrocketing the entire uh, um, draft process. Um, I think he's a guy you can even put on end on some fronts and let him go nuts and just have like a, like a all front four animal lineup um, formation. Um, I, I would, I'd like it a lot. Again, this would be, um, I guess the non, uh, so your first one's kind of a, a possible trade up uh, JD. This one would just be, if we st- stuck at 32, right? That's kind of what this right. one is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. This would be like the stick at 32 one. Um, and I, 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 mean, I wouldn't mind it at all. I, I think bolstering RD line, um, you know, some people, there's like two different groups in Kansas city. I feel there's the group that thinks like we have enough invested in our D line Felix first round, uh, the year before, uh, George first round Jones is our second highest paid player enough there. You could also go the other way and be like, Hey man, if it's your strength already, just put it over the top and make it absolutely dominant. Just make it unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And that way you don't maybe have to invest as much in your, in your cornerbacks, which we already right. kind of are not by trading our, our best one or right. arguably our best one's need. So you'd be like, you know, if those guys give quarterbacks 1.2 seconds to throw the ball, our quarterbacks don't need to cover guys for five seconds. Exactly. They, they just need to stick on them at the line, throw them off their route. And that's it. Quarterbacks got to get rid of the ball and throw it somewhere. And um, I, I wouldn't mind that at all. I, I would see that and be like, I get it. I know what they're trying to do. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would love this. Yeah, I think you need another guy because a man who's going to be out, he's going to be gone. Okay, so he came here last year and gave us everything he, he that we thought he was going to do, and even more, and then some because he was he, he was very versatile, moving in and out. Mike Dana just signed; he's a great fit and mix over there. I think we need a guy who can stop the run, who can rush the pass, put pressure on the quarterback. I agree with everything you said, Tasia. Like you said, if you get good pressure on the quarterback, then you don't need to cover, right? We got our corners, play man, shoot. And you want the ball out. Ball has to be out within four seconds, four and a half. It's not, if it's not gone by then, then it's over. Brandon Fisk could get back in four seconds, no doubt about it. Him and Chris Jones beside each other, hey, it's a done deal. George, FAU, come on. Let me make this thing happen. I like it. Defenses win championships, right? Defenses win championships. Okay. They won it. They helped win a champ. They won a championship for us last year. Yep. The defense did. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, yep. bolster it. Why not make it better? And help out the linebackers in, 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 in everything else, too, while you're doing it. Yeah. And also, too, I, I think with the same kind of um, reasoning and rationale that we want another guy on offense is to kind of take the load off Kelsey. Kelsey getting up there in years. Chris Jones, while he's still young, let's take the load off him. He's our second highest paid guy on our team. We don't want it it be the end all be all just on his back like it has been. Let's kind of take the load off him. We we we, we got the we got the edge rushers. Let's get a guy next to him finally, like what the Rams did last year by getting Kobe Turner, who 
JD was also high on last year in our mock draft. That's who you yeah. wanted us to take later on the draft. And look what he did this year. So obviously yeah. you, you see something in these D tackles and you're seeing something in Fisk mm-hmm. that uh, could be beneficial to the squad and uh, helping take the load off. Chris Jones is back in the trenches. So, yeah. All right, Tasia, who's your uh, second crush, buddy? All right. So now my second guy is a receiver. Okay. Not necessarily, I'd say. So I kind of do what you did. Uh, my, my first one would be sticking at 32. This one would be maybe going back a little bit. So it's Troy Franklin out of Oregon. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite receiver in the draft, but I'd like this. This would be my guy to trade back and try to draft. Okay. Uh, it also depend on who's out there at that point. If you have a bunch of re- top end receivers still out there, you could be okay. We can go back five, six and still get one of the guys we like. Um, well, let's just start with the negative and get that out of the way. Right. Because why not? Um, dreadfully bad gauntlet he ran if you're into that sort of thing and his other knock in game is a lack of physicality at the catch point um he is tall and light six two six three about one 185 190 um even though not physical at the catch point he is pretty good at avoiding press coverage he's, he makes good use of his hands um knows how to offset it uh he snaps off the route just easy uncoachable speed that he's got knows how to release, kills press coverage. Not the best yak guy, but from what I've read and heard, it's more because he's just not shifty. He's He he sees the field really well and sees the spacing and knows how to get to the open spaces, but he's just not the shiftiest, you know, like Zay Flowers type guy who's just like making people miss like a little human joystick left and right. Um, I was listening to the PFF, PFF guys talk about him too. They're, they're finished off by saying – he can be your number one, but they said if you have another guy on your team that soaks up the more physical cornerback play and he's able just to play freely wherever, then just take him and run because he will dominate that all day. Move him around the field, um, play him wherever, and as long as he's the guy who's not seeing they, – they compare it to like a, if you want to make him your Devontae Smith and you already have an A.J. Brown to soak up the tough cornerback play – then like that is who that, that that was the comp they gave on him too. Um, they just say take him and run. Um, I wouldn't mind taking him where we are, especially if I know that if that's our guy, that's our guy, and I trust our, our scouting and our GM. Uh, but I would love to trade back a few spots, pick up some more picks, and and still grab him, make it even better. Dude, I love his pick. <laughs> he to me. I had him above all the other guys from like from Texas. People was using his productivity alone was one that I was sitting there saying, you got to get a guy like this. I hate seeing guys come from college, you know, you 40 catches and 35. And you know, show a guy that's producing. Okay. Who can go up there and get the football who make guys miss. And you're right on press coverage. He's silky. He's skinny. So he's He's going to be able to get off of it and, and, and get going. And he's got enough speed to take off from guys. I, I like Troy Franklin a lot. I, to me, he was one of my top guys as wide receivers uh, that I thought he can absolutely be utilized by the Chiefs. He's a guy that we need. He is everything that we thought uh, MVS is going to be. Yeah, Everything. More productive. Got the speed and whatnot. Deep ball. Can go hit his head on the goalposts, uh, gives corners nightmares. He's a guy, like I said, to come in right now and immediately and play and make an impact. No doubt about it. I like this pick, Chase. I, I really do. So he was one of my guys that, that I was sitting there liking, like, man, he keeps showing up for me. And so when I keep looking at wide receivers, yeah, some guys got good highlights. You see good highlights. Guys catching the football. Well, you only got 39 catches. Y'all to have a good highlight. Shoot, maybe five out of the – then you only got 30 catches to uh, add to it. His is just time after time after time, you pick one out, okay, and watch it, what he does with it. And so my thing is, when you put the ball in his hands, he's going to get grimy. I love that. I love that about him. So, man, this is, this is a great pick, man. He, he's one of those guys. If he's around second round, you, you got to grab him. I don't know if he will be, 
I'd even say trade up or trade back. Trade back again. Yeah. You could get this guy. Yeah. Um, maybe use one. Maybe I'll use our Titans next year pick to trade up from the second. You know, if, if a guy you like still out there, I think it really depends on how many receivers are still left at our pick. If we get there and there's like four guys, those top first round type guys out there still left at 32, I think you can, I think you could trade back six or seven spots and still get one of the guys you covet um, and maybe recoup some more picks out of them. Um, now, the interesting thing about receiver and us is that friggin' Rasheed Rice stuff, man. Um, you're going to learn a lot about how we're really regarding the Rasheed Rice stuff by what we pick, in my opinion. And I, what I mean by that is if we take a guy – who completely compliments Rice as not like a borderline Rice clone, then yeah. we're like, Rice is going to be fine. We'll miss him for a few games. He'll come back and we're, we're back to business again. If we're actually worried about long-term with Rice, we might go for more of a guy like possibly like I'm seeing in the chat, like Coleman, um, who could just take a quick slant. His gauntlet was amazing. Like I, I was, I was such a Coleman fan early on after his gauntlet. Like he didn't, he didn't test well 40 time, but Coleman, man, that gauntlet didn't go below 19 miles per hour, snatching balls and just kept running like he didn't have the ball in his hand. I uh -huh. love that. For our type of offense, I love that. Um, it's a little ricey for me. I think we kind of have that already, a guy who does that really well. Mm -hmm. um, not that you can have enough enough guys to do that, but I, I think we'll just learn a lot about um, how we're regarding the whole rice situation. And if we get kind of a redundant to rice as kind of an insurance or we get a guy who flat out – because it's funny. We have a guy who's got a weird situation with Rice, who has one kind of skill set, and then you have Hollywood Brown who's on a one-year deal with another kind of skill skill set. Right. So do you go after a guy and hedge insurance on the deeper threat, or do you hedge insurance on a guy who, man, who knows what the hell is going to be happening with his legal stuff and and, 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 and trouble situation going on forward? So it's going to be re – receiver and us can be really interesting in this draft. I uh you know I know everybody talks about the gauntlet man. Uh I, I think it's just a false thing that everybody looks at to be honest with you. Yeah. You ain't hitting nobody. You ain't you all you do is catch a football throwing it down. I ran the gauntlet during the combine. I know what that looks like. So you can run as fast as you want to. All you doing is trying to catch the day on football. <laughs> so you ain't doing nothing. When I hear yeah. that, oh man that's that's more uh, compared to game speed. No it's not. You ain't got no no bodies. You ain't hit <laughs> You don't look, you have no thought in, the, in getting hit at all. So running straight ahead to catch the football, turn your head, catch, catch, catch. Hey man, it's all timing. It's all timing. I, I just it, things like that, man, I just I kind of laugh at, you know, because I'm sitting there as man, they're putting a whole lot of stock in these sucking these gauntlets. Uh and I'm not saying you're doing that, Tasia. I'm, I'm, when I hear other people talk about these things. No, 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 totally. I get yeah. that. That's why I said if you're into that sort of thing about the gauntlet. Right, but, right. But their defense would be, and I've listened to these guys talk, you know, at nauseam about it. Their defense would be like, if you are doing the gauntlet with no defenders on you and you have to run back three, four yards to catch a ball running, running across the field, and you can't stand your ground on that crossing route, then how are you going to do that in the NFL against the best of the best of the best on your ass? That's kind of what they're, they're saying. If you can't, you, if you're messing up at that at that um, um, task, at that route with no one on you, then what are you going to do in a real life situation? Maybe that's what they would say as a you know as a counter to that. I hear you. I wonder how many of these guys actually uh, played, ran the gauntlet, and, and played. In the NFL <laughs> how football. many of them, man? Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm sitting. At, what I'm sitting at looking. At when they, I'm like, hey, man, I, it's a whole different thing when when bodies is out there. And you in the fire. It's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. If you just out there running routes and you just run in a straight line, you just really and you're really not really catching the football. You just kind of tack it at your hands, throw it down, tack, throw it down. Like I said, I I mean, I've been at the combine. I see how it is. Uh you know, it it coach you say all the time, look like Tarzan, play like Jane. So I can look good in without pads and stuff off. He can be the most athletic guy. But that's why I like. I like Cope. I like Coleman. I like I like Coleman, uh, Keon. So, uh, but like when I'm saying I'm looking at production, you know, Troy Flankin, 81, 2023, 20, 61 the year before that, 18 the year before that, right? Averaging 17 yards a catch. 
had a, a 1,300 yards, over 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. You know, I mean. I will say, too, the guy on the PFF, uh, they said that um, Franklin's in-game metrics are, like, through the roof. Like, like if you love metrics of in-game, like, yeah. just, that's how oh, yeah. in-game, they say Franklin's is, like, like a dream, a dream metric guy uh, for, for in-game um, grading. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I like it production, man. I like your production. And he also comes from a uh, system in, in in Oregon that's kind of like a hybrid air raid type type system, which we, we kind of have a ty- hybrid West Coast air raid type system in Kansas City with the uh, you know what Andy and Pat uh, do. So I mean, it, he he will have some familiarity with, with that type of offense. So that also bodes well for him too. Yeah, I I I love this pick. All right, JD. Oh, and uh, also, uh, they did ask Andy about Rasheed Rice today. He said he's not going to comment on it. They're going to let law enforcement do their thing, and he's not going to comment on it. Uh, but he said he he has spoken uh, to him. I think I read it as well that he said he hopes uh, Rasheed's learned from the situation. Um, but so that's all Andy had to say about uh, Rasheed today. I didn't expect any more to be said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we're going to get to our final round of draft crushes, JD. Take it away with your final draft crush of our Bleacher Report special segment. So uh, my my last crush, okay, and I don't know if we get to get this guy, if he's able to have, if he's going to be there. You know, I'm just, these are my three crushes, the guys that just always, that I'm sitting there saying, I this this is a no-brainer to me, uh, is Xavier Leggett. I watched this dude uh, play against Kentucky, and I've always like, man, who is this guy? And I thought he was coming out like his sophomore year. And this dude is a big, fast receiver. Deep ball receiver. Kind of run dig routes. Can body people up. uh, Just physically opposing. I mean, he really is. So when I look at it, you know, when they say the comp, and I remember Steve Simpson was saying he looks like a uh, – my man up in – Hey, got it. DK? DK Metcalf. So he looked like DK Metcalf and better. That's what he said. He's, a, he's better than DK Metcalf. I'm like, whoa. I was already on board. And Steve Smith, he says he's better than DK Metcalf. Body type like A.J. Brown. Can jump up and get the football the way you want to. Jump up, whatever. That's that's. I like this guy. I really like him. Uh, I've just been impressed with him for the past couple of years Like because I, when I see him playing in the game, there's no doubt who's the best guy on the field. And, and it's this guy, Xavier Leggett. So he's a hard worker. Uh, when I hear him talk, because he has a real deep country accent, I'm like, this guy right here is going, he's just going to enjoy playing football. You know, he didn't want to get all the stuff, the, 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 the trinkets and stuff like that. He wants to go out there and just ball. He'll, he'll probably, he, he's a guy that you might want to take on a fishing trip. You know, maybe go get some some gator somewhere or something like that. <laughs> maybe put some chaw in his mouth and just let him ball. So that's it. That's it. But just for what he can do on the football field, uh, I think he runs pretty good routes. I think he can uh, he can definitely play with the best of them. But for me, he's a starter in NFL. He's he's an immediate day one starter. That's the, that's the thing about this guy. Uh, you don't have to develop him. He comes in. He's already a plug and play guy. All right. He's a plug and play guy. Uh, great hands, great cash radius, very strong, strong hands. He can do it all. He can do it all. So that's my my draft crush, Xavier Leggett. Uh, but, you know, when we do these mock drafts, man, if you don't get in first round, he's never there in the second. Mm-hmm. He, he just he just never is. I, every, I try to do everything to work to get him on the second round, and he's never there. He's <laughs> always gone. So, uh this, this, he's he's my crush man because of the things he's able to do on the football field, no doubt. Yeah, and he, speed. He's very interesting. What you, you what you make the uh, the DK comparison? I guess Steve Smith Senior said that he was a remind him of DK, but better. But it's also his run after the catch too is is like Debo in a way where it's like it's a combination of DK and Debo. And it's like why isn't that guy? Uh, why why is he not like a top ten pick? You know why is he not projected as that? Because we we're talking about D, DK Debo like hybrid kind of guy i mean geez i would i mean i would love him i'm a huge debo guy i wanted Traylon burks two years ago 
Um, mm-hmm. that obviously hasn't panned out, but he was he was like a, a Debo like guy in that draft, and we're talking a DK and Debo hybrid kind of guy. I would I would love Xavier Leggett. So if, if we were to, if we were to get him some somehow, I would I would love it. I think it's a lack of tape. Um, he didn't really do a lot before this last this last season. He kind of just like broke out and exploded. That's probably it. And listening to a lot of people talk about this draft, when they have guys ranked lower, it's not a knock on them at all. This draft is right, loaded. Right. It's yeah. loaded. And and uh, again, um, um, I know I'm talking a lot about the PFF guys because they have to do their rankings and stuff, right? They're like, you know, people get so caught up on the numbers in our rankings. So you have this guy fifth, but he's eighth. He's like, fit five, eight means nothing. The difference between your five and your eight guy is like a fraction. It, it, it all comes down to preference and what you want on your football team. Because again, after the top three, four to like 15 are really, really close in their um, analysis and their metrics. They're all really close. So it's maybe a reason to wait, trade back and get a guy you like, especially if you like a bunch of them. Um, but yeah, it just comes down to like your personal preference in the end. Cause a lot of these guys are ranked so close. Um, I've heard the DK Metcalf thing. I've heard the uh, just attacks the ball, um, just physical as hell, uh, just a, a beast, really. Um, but the only thing, yeah, I guess would knock would be just um, not a lot, not a, a lot of tape before this season. But he's a guy again. I think you'd also he's kind of he could do multiple things, right? So if you got him, you could be like, okay, well, he can fill in the Rice role, and even when Rice does come back. Having him, Hollywood, and Bryce, it can work. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a unique talent for sure. And, like, he's, he's one of the few guys in this draft that kind of, like, stands out. Obviously, in the Marvin Harrison, you have the Duze. But, like, even with those guys, he just provides a, just kind of a different skill set altogether. Even, even when you, you look at those guys and him, it's just, yeah, one year, you know, he's only really shown it one year. But, like, just look at his playing style. He's just so different from those other guys. And, like, Quite frankly, talent wise, I think he's up there with them, but he's just not getting the praise as uh, as those guys are. Which, you know, that for, luckily for us, he could potentially go back to thirty two, maybe. So, yeah, dude, he he's when I'm watching, he's just he's just running past guys, and just outrunning them, and he's 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 hard to, he's so hard to bring down because of his size. Mm-hmm. So when you when you sit there and say, well, shoot, if he he had the one year production, you know, which I like. You get a, a talented guy like Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball to him. Shoot, hey, he's I mean, he's he's slotted could do whatever. Uh, and I'd be like, man, throw the ball up to this guy. He uh, Xavier's down there somewhere. That's how I look at it. <laughs> you in trouble? Xavier's down there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what, what the, the Debo aspect of it, we're talking about a guy who's 6'4, 230, and he can run after the catch like Debo, like that, ag- yeah. that aggression. It's like, geez, man, like t- t- hard to bring down. But also, I mean, just there's so many different, so many different possibilities you could have with, with a guy like this. So, yeah, right. I'm, 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 Seahawks totally developed like, Debo though. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm not DK. Debo, but like D- DK. Seahawks developed him because he was known as just like a, maybe a quick slant or just deep route guy to so have him go deep or just kind of get a quick slant and go. Mm-hmm. So they did work with him and they were patient with him in doing that. Like, Hey, we can, we can feature the things he's really good at while we're developing like the things that he needs to get better at. And special receivers can do that. He's definitely someone you can do that with. Let's have him oh, go yeah. in here, do exactly what he's strong at. And in that meantime, we'll get working on the other things to make him a complete receiver. And then we just have a badass on our hands at that point. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think I think whoever, wherever he goes, he's going to be a guy that's going to be a staple in the NFL. Like you're going to hear his name all the time. Yeah, like the legit guy on the, whoever teams he's on, he's going to be the guy. You know, definitely top two on their team. So, so as far as like mocks and stuff, Tish, I know you've been like you do a deep dive on this like the stuff uh-huh. a lot uh, as far as all the different PFFs and all these. Where is is he? Is he like a mid first round to like a mid second round? Is that is that where they they kind of have him slotted in? I mean, look, you could be surprised by any team who's just in love with him, like JD said, where he's not going to come back to us in the second. But no, mostly second round. Okay. Yeah. A lot of a lot of these guys. I mean, Franklin. I've seen him late first, but I've also seen him go into like the early mish second. I, I'd yeah. say I wouldn't. I wouldn't go past. If you really wanted him, I, I wouldn't trade past pack the first like five picks of that second round if you want him. 
But if you're in a situation where Mitchell, McConkey, Franklin, uh, Leggett, they're all still available and you're like, we love all of them, then yeah, hell yeah. Trade back like five picks. Pick up like an extra fourth rounder, early fourth or something. Or maybe third, because when you get that extra year out of the first round. So I, I don't know what that's fourth anymore, but you, you get something really nice out of that. Pick up another player in this talented as draft and still get one of the guys you love. Yeah. That's the beauty of having so many guys like that are that good in this draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that's one thing I've noticed when we, when we don't all these shows and we talk about receivers specifically, we, we, I think we're all like in favor. Like, yeah, we, lo we love that guy. And then we love that guy too. So it's like, when you see there's so many like, Oh, I love that guy. Then it's like, okay, well then, you know, they obviously do yeah. different things differently and they're good at different things, but we'd be okay with either one of these, any of these guys. Cause that's how deep this draft is. Well, remember last year it had a lot of, it was like the small guy draft. Remember? Yeah. Yep. Um, this draft has so many of everything. You have the crazy vertical threats that can't stop speed. You have a lot of the catch and yak guys. You have a lot of the guys who can do a little of everything. There are so many of each kind of guy. This is just like, it's a candy store. Yeah. And yeah, Xavier Leggett, 2023 numbers was better than all the guys who would be at 32. Yeah. I mean, his numbers are insane. All right, Teja. So take us away with the final draft crush of our special edition episode. So this will make the Kansas Kansas City fans happy. Yep. <laughs> um, on to an O. Look at that. Look at that. So I'll do another O lineman. Uh, I went interior. I went uh, Cooper Beebe out of K State. Big guy, 6'4", 6'5", 335. Now, I'm going to regurgitate stuff I've read about this guy because I did not watch K-State this year, but the crap I read, man, was just so awesome. Technically sound, a little stiffness, more of a straight runner, not more agile side to side. Power player, obviously, I'm going to say that. Here's the crazy part, though, okay? In his college career, he played over 700 snaps at left tackle, over 1,600 snaps at left guard, 20 at right guard, almost 500 snaps at right tackle. Dude played everywhere. Last year, he played in his first three games, he played an equal amount of snaps at left guard and right tackle. When I heard that, and, and here's the amazing part of this, PFF guys talked about this, he graded equally at all of those. It wasn't like they had to play him at left tackle and he just, you know, he was the best they got, so they just did it. He graded equally in all of them, left guard, left tackle, right tackle. He Wherever he played, he graded equally as good in pass blocking grades and run blocking grades. Jeez. Okay. They have him switching in game, to different positions. Like yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Um, he split a lot between right tackle and left guard. And I'll tell you this, JD. Like you said, we're talking about different positions here, yeah. different alignments. Yeah, like, left guard and right tackle in game. That's right. crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, and and to not like to not miss a beat was just like whoa. Um, the amount. I mean, he might have more left tackle snaps than like Guyton and Mims do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Not a left tackle guy because, you know, shorter arms. I think he has like 31 and change arms, uh, not the ideal left tackle. But to play that, even in college, when you're naturally a guard and like look good at it, like hold your own, it's just so damn impressive. And we love our versatility in Kansas City. So you're talking about a guy this year who can maybe back up three to four positions on the O line. And then once Trey Smith, which, oh, you know, I've, I've heard, we don't know this for a fact, it's a year away. But he might be moving on um, for con contract reasons because he's going to get paid. And we just can't pay everyone, unfortunately. But that's a guy who maybe just starts a guard next year. Um, so I've seen him go anywhere from late second to late third. Um, if we can get him moving up in the third using maybe our – or maybe getting back into the draft using our Tennessee pick for next year, maybe try like a fifth and our Tennessee to get back in like the mid-third to get him – um, I just think it would be it'd be amazing. We're talking about a guy who can go to back up BR Allegretti for you know guard, guard, maybe even some tackle uh in a pinch. He's just an in a pinch player. Like, all right, he can handle it. He's kind of like Tooney in that regard. You know, like we always say, like, well, yeah. we're really desperate. Uh Joe could just step in and play left tackle for half the game. That's right. kind of what he was at K-State and what he could be in the NFL and just be a on top of that, like Tooney, be a badass guard on top of it all. Oh, that's impressive. All, all the stats you said, man, is absolutely impressive. This this dude is an old lineman. Yeah. When you said like 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 Joe Tooney, if he can he moves around like that and be as, as effective guard to, to tackle, 
Um, shoot, man, that's a legit guy. And then you talk about who do you keep if you if if you do need to get rid of right contract talks, Trey Smith, or if you don't want to keep Joe Tooney and play, you know, pay him. Yeah. What do you do, right? Joe Tooney, like I said, I keep saying this. We know that Joe Tooney is one of the best guards in the league. Um, and if you have him on the other side of it, I mean, shoot, that works. And Creed Humphrey, uh, Humphrey uh, you know, you had to pay one of those two guys. I'm thinking that they'll, they'll pay one of the two, Trey or, or Creed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So people have their – their uh, uh, what they think is, is the, the better move to make, right? You have Everybody has their own opinion. But you add a guy like this to the line, um, I mean, shoot, I, I, I'm not mad at that at all. I like everything you said about him. I, and I don't really know a whole lot about him either, Taish. You know, mm-hmm. I, to, to be honest, I haven't really looked at guards at all in this draft, at, at all, of guys to get. Uh, just because I know we're solid there on the interior at this moment and this time. I know Alec Reddy, he left. Probably need to get somebody in here to take over, you know, being that guy that could – can play any position, but if this guy has the ability and the versatility to go out there and do tackle as well, uh, I think you would want him to, but he, if he could, he, like yes. in a pinch, like, hey, move him out. Can you do it? Like, yeah, shit, we've seen this film. Yeah, he can do it. Okay, let's then let's let's go with it. Uh, I like it. Just like solid, it. solid eight, 10 plus year guard in the NFL. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like solid. Uh, I, I mean, that's, we need that especially, you know, as a good insurance for, for Trey. And we still haven't got a replacement for Allegretti. So, you know, we he, he will have his part this year. I mean, guys will miss games. So if you don't want to lose a step at guard, and on top of that, be able to, you know, carry the torch, pass the torch on to him next year when Trey leaves, I mean, that's just, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's strikingly similar to how we use Tooney, where, like, if he, he can step in and play left tackle on a pitch. And the fact that he did all these things. And also, too, I think people forget, Tooney wasn't a first-round pick. Joe Tooney was a third-round pick by the Patriots in 2016. Yeah. So, like, and this guy's what, slated to be a, a second- or third-round pick kind of yep. deal. So, very similar to Tooney situation. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, with Trey Smith, free agency coming along, I think this would be a really an ideal pick. And plus, J.D., we've talked about it before. Our Kansas City scouts, they have a hyper-focus in that Kansas State, the Missouri, those schools around that area. Yeah, and obviously the, the the fan base loves a guy who is actually from Kansas City. So like it, it would be it would be a perfect thing. We make the fans happy, and it would also check off some boxes. And he went to the local work too, so they have it. They had a really good uh, look at him. So if they take him, it's because they got a good look and they like what they see, and they're gonna they're gonna run with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just um, you know the fact that if I see them take him in the draft, I'll know that. They saw they got they saw a lot and they liked what they saw. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent Yeah. So obviously we check off a lot of boxes. And and also too, whether he's gonna play this year or not, it's the Allegretti role. And it's a vers- versatile guy who can play all positions in a pinch. And well, yeah. Allegretti played our biggest game of the season. So you know what I mean? Like he's we're talking about two contributors, two super bowls at the started. highest he's level. Started. Yeah, he started in two Super Bowls. Let's yeah, I forget. So, I mean, you know, the Allegretti role is like your sixth man off the bench in an NBA on an NBA team. Okay. Yep. That's important. <laughs> you yep. may not be starting getting all those accolades, but that's a contribution. He's, he's mm-hmm. going to play. I mean, he's definitely going to play. And I think he's a pro ready prospect. He's right, ready to play. Yep. Could you yep. get maybe a team that wants to start him off the bat right away? Yeah. I mean, the, the, and they'll probably take him earlier than we would. Um, but you never know. Like, I mean, that that's a season away and, you know, we have a whole management team thinking about that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, and we and we all know that they are uh, our front office likes to, to look at those Kansas State guys. Um, we have a history of that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but all right, guys. Well, that does it. That comes to an end of our draft crush episode. So we'll be on later on on our YouTube channel eight o'clock tonight for our second mock draft of the season. Uh, Tej Eddie will go into the five rounds of, of picks, and uh, we'll get into that later on on our YouTube channel, Chief Concerns on YouTube. You can find us also Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, so yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed our draft crush episode, and also celebrity crush episode, the beginning of, of this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, 
Love you, fellas. I'll see you guys in a few hours for our, our mock draft. And everybody who was, was in the chat, love you guys. And appreciate, appreciate you. everyone chiming in. Absolutely. Later, love y'all. Right. Y'all later. Later. See you guys, a few hours. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.